Hi everybody, welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and I'm joined by Decker. How are you doing mate? Very good, thanks. How are you? you all right? And we're nice, brand spanking, oh. new, new studio with new wall, with new lights, with new photos. It's the first time I've seen it, well, done like this. Um, it does look absolutely fantastic. It's still a bit too hot. Yeah, well, no, there's, there's a fan here, which is lovely. It's like a, someone just blown on my legs, which I'll, I'll never turn down. So. We, we, um, so. You're doing a great job, Pep. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, so we're back. It's the, the first Premier League game of the season mm -hmm. for Newcastle United's campaign. Um, we are hosting West Ham at St. James's Park. West Ham, who we've got a decent record against, especially mm -hmm. last season. Yep, double. Um, double. So opening game of the season, obviously, opening fixtures were... Uh, delayed it was September, middle of September, September the 12th. My birthday night out, it was, yeah. So, we went and watched the West Ham game, and superstar Jeff Hendrick ran yeah. the show. Yeah, what was a uh, I think we've spoken about this before that you think of how the season turned out. We we, we played really well that mm. day, right? Yeah. And we were obviously we were <clears throat> out on the drink together, and it was one of the first nights out as well because obviously COVID had been around, it was like. One of the first that had been around. I hate when I say it like that. Um, it was when the bars opened up again. We had yes, booked tables and, booked and stuff table like that. Yeah, yeah. And, all the rest of it. and we, we played absolutely brilliantly. I wasn't expecting anything really from the game in Mohammedan. Um, and as you say, Jeff Hendrick was outstanding. Um, future looked bright. West Ham didn't. And they finished, <laughs> they finished fifth or something. But anyway, yeah. you know, it's funny yeah. how, it, how it works. And I think that's something I do want to say is no matter what happens tomorrow, um, we just need not to... React because I, mm. I think people do that off one game of football, right? Yeah. You know, it's like it doesn't set the tone. It would be lovely to win, but don't get too over over um, over excited or or too negative. If we get beat. Mm. Yeah, obviously later on the season um, when it was back at St James's Park, that was a decent game. Um, mm. It was three two in the end. Yeah, um, more two nil up, very comfy at one stage. And well, then, were so yeah. they had the, the sending off and That's conceded right. in the same run of play. So the same uh, a player, Joe Linton, got fouled halfway line, second yellow card, they scored an own goal. <laughs> but then towards the end of the game, what well, horses dropped, if I remember right, you know and what? it was 2-2 at one point. It, it was. It, that's such a... I would expect that to happen to us, that <laughs> yeah. we score an own goal, and we get a man sent off all in the same play. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was amusing. Like, But they, I remember that they went to 2-2. <laughs> it was and the was worst fun. own goal as well. Oh, <laughs> horrendous little double tap back heel thing. It was just <laughs> awful. Um yeah, but as you say, it was it was two 0 up, looking comfortable. Even Joe Linton scored, mm. um, Big Joe, and then um, it went twos each, and then Willick, Willick scored, yeah, um, came on. I think off the bench and, and scored, kept his run going. That might, uh, yeah, I think that might be one of the games where it was like a record almost he had broke or mm. match possibly, or possibly. Um, yeah. So um, I have, I, as I say, I think I mentioned mentioned before we start, we haven't lost against West Ham in the last five times we've played them. Yeah, we've won four and drew one. Which is, I mean, which is great. But it, 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 it's a new season, isn't it? It's, it's, it's all in the past, that. So, mm. but I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, I'd rather have not lost off them five times than getting spanked five exactly. times. So. Exactly. So, going into this game, obviously, we've got a few issues goalkeeping position. Um, Bruce said in his conference yesterday, I think it was, that it's definitely going to be Freddie Woodman starting. Mm -hmm. um, he said that Dolo's lost a stone and a half, I oh. think, because of COVID. Um, Debrav guys, obviously, it's his ankle which he had surgery on, if yeah, I remember. After the Euros. um, and Gillespie, I'm not quite sure. I think he's okay, right? Okay, I think he may but be Freddie Woodman's just starting, Gillespie's Absolutely, gonna be yeah. second. It's to, to Woodman, to be fair to, to Woodman. Um, and I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent here, but this is probably what he's wanted for a long time. But because of the caliber of Newcastle United goalkeepers and the fact that Dolo done so well at the start of last season with Debrav guys' injury, I think that was on his ankle again. Didn't somebody like didn't the physio and a doctor get sacked or something or something dodgy about that? Sure, but that's a whole yeah. different thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Allegedly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Woodman obviously is getting game time there uh, at Newcastle United. Something which he has wanted for a long time. I think we refused to sell him not so long ago um, mm -hmm. because of he was running, he wouldn't sign a new contract or something ridiculous like that. Um, but with Woodman starting, does that worry you at all? Or I know there's a lot of fans out there saying that he's not experienced, but we'll have to remember he, he played the full season last season in the championship for Swansea and that yeah. he had a decent season, a very, very good season. I think he's 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 definitely a goalkeeper that you would say has had minutes. So all right, yes, maybe he hasn't played much for us and he hasn't played at Premier League mm -hmm. level much, but he has played minutes season after season recently yeah. because he's been out on loan, which is it is not the whole idea of loaning someone out exactly. to give them experience exactly. all the rest of it so I do agree I think um, I, I remember I was Shea Given said it about Harper or vice versa sorry that 
each of them they loved each other, but they were hoping one of them got injured, so they, yeah. they got a chance, you know. And the, there's you know there was a time where I thought Woodman's days were done because we had Darlow playing mm. so well. Dubravka would be coming back, and little do you know you'd be starting the season with him as your number one at mm. this present moment in yeah. time, which is which is surprising. But for him himself, I mean, I bet he's having a a funny sleep at night because he'd be so excited for tomorrow. He's got to be. The, the worrying thing for for Woodman is we'll obviously move on in a second, but. If he he's going to get a run of games, of course he is because of the injuries that we'll have. But when Dolo is fit, is an automatic right? Okay, Woodman comes out and Dolo goes back in because he is your basically second choice goalkeeper in that squad. Dolo, when Debravka's injured, it, it, then when Debravka's back, where does that leave Woodman? Because we can't send him out on loan after the loan window was closed. No. Then what happens to him? And it seems such a shame that he's in that awkward position now, where I think no matter what, when you're Two top goalkeepers, you two number one and number two are fit. That wouldn't just automatically drops unless he has an absolute blinder. Then once again, that means Dolo is going to drop in a third position. It's it's a strange mm. situation. It's something off the top of my head where I can't remember being in a situation with goalkeepers before. No, uh, no. center backs, yes, that's yeah. happened a lot, but goalkeepers not even close. I would say for for Woodman to, to keep all of the place. He needs to do what Darlow did when yeah. Dubravka didn't start the season. Mm. And we all worried that, you know, with Darlow being the number one, it would be a really worrying time. Mm. And then Darlow made the place his own. And yeah. Dubravka couldn't get back in. Yeah. I know there's social media and a lot of people weren't, weren't happy with that. And I think I've said this before that I do feel that Bruce, rightfully or, or wrongly, will 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 give trust in someone if they've played well and haven't let mm. him down. He will, yeah. uh, but I do agree that, let's just say Woodman plays really well and Darlow comes back fit. Darlow hasn't played any preseason, as we know. It's taken a long time, so maybe he might stick with Woodman. But if mm. then Dubravka also gets fully yeah. fit, well, you can't. One, yeah, one of them, yeah, and it's yeah. either going to be. It's not going to be Dubravka, is it? No, no, no. It's going to be Darlow. It would be Darlow, yeah. And, and Gillespie's even further down the pecking order. Yeah, God knows. Yeah, we're going to end up going in the season with possibly four, or five goalkeepers in that squad. Yeah, I think it also puts a lot of pressure on Woodman, though. That especially when these you know, your number one and number two do come back. Mm. He will know, God, if I do one mistake here, yeah. I'm out. So yeah. it's, you know, that, that can be pressurising as well. But I suppose we're lucky, I think we're very lucky to have, you could say, a respectful, a, a third choice goalkeeper that is as good as Woodman is. He's mm -hmm. very highly thought of. Yeah. And there'd be a lot of teams, I think, going into the, tomorrow's game with your third choice goalkeeper being really worried. Yeah. And I'm not actually, I'm, honestly, I'm not. Uh, I'd rather to Bravka be in, of course I would. But I, I think, yeah. you know, I haven't seen much of Woodman, I will be fair here. I haven't watched much of when he was at the championship, but from what I was reading about him, he was doing very well. So yeah. No, you're right. And I think the only other injury concern is, is the Paul Dummett. He's out. That's right. Um he's definitely not going to be featured in the game. Um but he's the rest of no injury, isn't he? He struggled quite a bit the last few seasons with injuries. Like yeah, he has done. Um but the rest of the field, it looks like a pretty strong squad, and and, and that's mm. Is is Dummett going to be in your starting eleven? Come obviously normal season if if he's fully fit, probably not. It, so no, depending on what formation we play, I wouldn't have made. It's almost going to be your, your strongest starting eleven going into this game. Yeah, well, Shelby was a surprise because I'm sure I had read reports or Bruce had said that they didn't think Shelby would make the start of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, but he, he played in the preseason game against Norwich. Change the game. Change the game when he came on. Yeah, but I, you know. I still think there's a player there. I, I totally appreciate that he gets the, the lazy comments and he doesn't track back. And we've spoke about it, you know, a lot. I still think he has something. I still believe he does. And um, but I don't know. My, my question to you really is: Are you excited for tomorrow? Do you feel? Do you feel like it's the dawn of a new season? Are you excited? For um, no, I could happily miss tomorrow's game and not be that bothered. Right. Okay. And normally going into the start of the season, you, I can't wait for. for yeah. I can't wait to go into town, go and have a few pints. It's at that point where. I'm not even going to go for a drink before or after. Right. I'm just going to go to the game, uh -huh. then go back home. Is like, that because the Euros was on? Do you think if there was no Euros and it was, I don't know. Finished and then you had a big I think, gap? I think it's probably just the situation where we're all right now as a club. Yeah, yeah. And obviously yeah. the whole takeover saga run on, which we're not going to get into, but that's flattened a lot of people. Yeah. And it's probably damning spirits, hasn't it? And it really has. Been. And obviously the whole saga with, with Joel Willick is he going to sign? Is he not? He did yesterday. Um, but the club couldn't get the paperwork done in time, so he's not even going to feature, which is absolutely embarrassing as a football club. Um, but no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not excited, mate. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely don't have the the feeling that I used to get when it was mm. the first day of the season. Yeah. You know, and, and and I used to be really buzzing for it. And um, do you know what? When, when we're sitting talking about it, I, a couple of things I will say. I, I'm thrilled that the team. I mean. 
it's not it's not a strong team. It's not a strong squad because let's be fair, we're all going to be weaker than we were last season because we've we've only brought in a player that we already had and we've lost Carol. We've lost other players. I'm not saying they were world beaters, but there were options. Obviously, you, the squad. you've lost Lejeune, who was on loan anyway. Um, Mutu has gone, who yeah. didn't feature very. What, what do you have? He was in on loan last season. He went out with yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Carol was doing Carol with the odd few appearances yeah. at that game when he came up for twenty seconds. Yeah. Um, so there's a few. There's a few gone out who I'm not saying would by any stretch change cover the wise though. But yeah, cover wise, we haven't though. strength. We've yeah. let them three players go. But have we, how would you say we've replaced Mutu? Well, we haven't. Mm. Have we replaced Carol? Absolutely not. Yeah. Like, um, we haven't even took a sideways step on them. To Porch as well, just haven't replaced them yeah. at all. And, and you look Which, at obviously, we'll, we'll move forward to the likes of your striking position. And, and we know Callum Wilson had quite a few injuries last season yeah. where, where he missed quite a few chunks of the season Absolutely. in different parts. Yeah. Um, if he gets injured, it's it's leaving you with Dwight Gale as your only recognized striker <clears> after <throat> that. Obviously, Dwight Gale scored a couple of goals against it, Norwich, it, good goals as well. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a lot of pressure on Callum Wilson not to get injured. And he, well, we all know that he's not going to see a full season. Exactly. exactly. And, and neither is Gale either. Mm. Gale it, always getting hamstring injuries or groins or whatever. And th- th- there's a chance where you'll have, not have either of them. You know what I mean? You, and mm. you'll have to maybe, uh, he's rumored of wanting to play Saint up there quite often. And obviously, Joe Linton, but we've all had that debate. He's not an out and out strike. Even Which Bush is, said it's that. fair enough if you play the football to match that style. Yeah. But when it gets to the point where we're just lumping it forward, well, Saint's not the person that you want to be lumping the ball no, to. No, I mean, maybe that's maybe a benefit, Carol, not being here anymore. Yeah. Because when he did come on, it was just, exactly, that's all I've it? got for you. you know what I mean? yeah. But to go back to the to game tomorrow, I mean, excitement-wise, no. I'm, I'm not what I used to be like, if I'm honest with you. However, looking at the team, there's still people within the team that do excite us. I mean, you all know Saint will, of course. Yeah. I think Miggy needs to have a bigger season. He needs a good season. He needs a year. good season. Uh, Wilson's on their fit tomorrow. I know Willock's not playing, but at least he's going to be part of it in the coming days, of course, the coming weeks. So there, there is something there, I feel. Um, me worry is, is with the majority of feeling towards, as you've said, people not really looking forward to the season, not happy with where the club's going. If we do lose tomorrow, just, you know what I mean, just how the vibe will mm. be. Off the field, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the fans will be furious, I would imagine. So, well, haven't had the greatest pre season, let's be honest. The pre season has no. been pretty poor, um, apart from that Norwich game. But even seeing that, the first 45 minutes were dreadful in that game, really, really bad. Um, but I think, I think we just have to, it kills us to say it, but we just have to realize where we are right now. Mm-hmm. And that's no fault of the fans, it's it's no. not, no. It, it's the ownership down. Obviously, the reason why there hasn't been a huge amount of money invested is because of Mike Ashley doesn't want to be here at the club. And, and he's, he's made that obvious now yeah. that he's not going to start spending money on a club that yeah. he, he's hoping to get rid of in the next X amount of months, years, whatever, yeah. which is understandable from his point. I, I completely get that. But whilst he's doing that, it's going to leave the club worse off. Oh, yeah. Which once again, by him doing that, it drops the value of the club and yeah. he, he's not going to get that money. But once again, that that's a conversation for for. God, we could chat hours I know, about yeah. Mike Ashley and, yeah. and what he's done at this football club and why it's where we are at the moment. But what you said there about losing the opening game of the season, yes, if we do it, we, we can't we can't start throwing toys out of the pram mm-hmm. and, and kicking off because somebody's going to lose. There's, yeah. there's going to be teams this season that are going to lose. Obviously, Arsenal lost last yeah, night yeah, and we saw the reaction. From their fans on the well, back of that, well, yeah. Um, so, so if we lose, it's going to be the same. But like we said, our record against West Ham, it, it is up there, and it is. I think having fans back in St James's Park and and Wilson playing in front of those fans, and and First Saint, time the number nine in terms yeah, of the proper game, anyway. and Saint when, when he came on against Norwich, he loved it having the fans in the ground. So, I honestly, I don't think we'll get beat tomorrow. I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, well. I'm, I'm, I was thinking in my head of the formation tomorrow in terms of what he might play. Um, and when you mentioned Dummett there, I was thinking, he, you know, if he plays like a five at the back situation, he might probably have Richie left back anyway, mm-hmm. or left wing back, and then Murphy plays right wing back. And I, I, I personally think that that's pretty good. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't mind them two being out there. Yeah. You know, you, they're not necessarily doing loads of defensive work. Shelby will probably play alongside Hayden, which we've had that same mm-hmm. midfield for the last 10 years. Yeah. And then you'll have St. Wilson and Miggy. Mm-hmm. That's my feeling. And I honestly think you know, there's opportunities there where can hurt them. I really do. We we um, can punish teams. We saw it last season. That that on the counter was, attack, yeah, yeah. we can punish teams. Yeah. But we need to take more of a front foot into a game as well. Because yes. those players that you've just mentioned, which we shouldn't really be sitting back, then waiting to hit yeah. on. <clears throat> if we're good enough, we should be doing that every single game. At least yeah. tr- like trying yeah. to score goals rather than absorbing the pressure and then going forward. And I think 
we have to get into a pattern now, like you said, with the five at the back, where no matter what happens tomorrow or or the Villa game or the game after that, we stick with that formation. Yeah. Yeah. I know Bruce at the start of last season was start with four four two. Um then we're done all right. Yeah. Then we lost against Norwich. I no. Who did we lose against? Uh, Norwich. Was it Leicester game? We uh, got yeah. absolutely bad. Yeah. Um then as soon as that happened, he's like, No, we're changing it. Yeah. And then obviously you've got the situation. Remember when it was the gloves are off, I'm doing it my way. And mm. there's always this thing that Bruce wants to wants to play four at the back. And he said that plenty of times, don't get us wrong. Uh, I do think we are better with five at the back, no question. Yeah. And I'm hoping that's what we'll play tomorrow. Uh, Lascelles, Shea, and Fernandez. Mm. I'm hoping it's them three. Is, yeah. is, 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 that's a, that's, to me, that's not great bad. Setup, actually, great setup, actually. And yeah. those two wing backs, which you mentioned, right. Richie ended the season quite well yeah. last season. And Murphy had a decent season Re- last good year. Season. Good season. Um, yeah. Somebody who we've been quite critical of, but we appreciate what he certainly did last mean, season. Mean. Um, and I, I think with Murphy, there is a player in there, but then it, it leaves you with Lewis. Obviously, Lewis came brought yeah. in with, with huge potential. Yeah. Then he failed to impress massively. Yeah. Um, I'm just... I think he said it in articles that he struggled to adjust to our playing style compared to Norwich because Norwich were on the front foot, weren't they? They were, yeah. And yeah. ours would just sit back, defend. Yeah. Um, he didn't look you, physical enough for me. Either. He didn't. But he's got a year on his belt now. Mm-hmm. And is it a chance where, yes, you start Richie or do you go back with Lewis and think, right, second chance? Um, it's a difficult one, isn't it? It is when, you, when you've when you signed someone, you know, believing that that's the future, mm. that that position is going to be him. For me though, you you can't go wrong with Richie. Like, if I'm honest with you, I, I'm I'm not to go wrong with Richie. Jesus, if we were going to try and be top fives and top sixes, of course you've got to move on from Richie. What I mean is where we are at the moment. I don't think you can go wrong with Richie in terms of his passion. Similar, to what he's dumb, doing. isn't it? Reliable. He's reliable, yeah. He, and he, you know, what it is? He, he gives you a little bit more down mm. the left side than what Dummett would. Um, he, he's willing to get forward. We know he's got a decent left foot on him. Scored preseason. Yeah, he, Norwich. he did. Yeah. Um, and to me, if he's fit, he plays. End of. Yeah. That's honestly yeah. how I feel about Richie. I probably um, agree, yeah. And I think we've had discussions in the past of him possibly leaving. You know, every window I seem to get mentioned he's going back to Bournemouth mm. or whatever. And the, the the sort of consensus between everybody was like, oh, don't really want him to go. Because mm. he gives everything he's got and that's what we like in a player, right? We want. It's, he demands more from the players around him as around well. Him, yeah, so yeah, it's not just him with him being on the field. And I think we mentioned this before. If I'm a player playing alongside him, I'm scared to mess up and I'm, I wouldn't right. want to put any less than 100% in yeah. because he's going to be the player that calls you out. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. And that's what you need, right? Yeah. Mini you, need that. you need that on the field. And I, I, I do honestly think that we can, I mean, them have got um, the lad from Brentford that they signed. Is it, sorry, I apologize for his name. Is it Baraman or something? Baraman. He, he's, he's something like that. He look very, very skillful. Mm. So we've got to be very careful with him. They've got uh, Bones, a good player. So they, they, these Rice will be back in probably. So they've got some great players themselves. Mm. So I know we're bigging myself up of seeing yeah. and, and, and Richie or whatever. It, it's it's going to be a difficult game, as every game is difficult in the Premier League. But um, I wouldn't say that I'm, for all it's been a crap um, off season and it hasn't been many optimistic. I am still quite optimistic for tomorrow's game. Yeah, and I, I do think we can we can win like I do. We've got a fair, fair favorable opening start of the season, Aye. and we don't normally have that either. No, no, as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm saying that obviously West Ham obviously finished high up last well, season. Then they'll be thinking that tomorrow. Think, well, we've got yeah. Newcastle. And we'll... Then you got Villa, and Villa have done well in yeah. regards to transfer window. I know yeah. Greedish has gone, but they've done well yeah. uh, to to bring the three players in with that money. Um, but like like you said, tomorrow I'm I'm strangely optimistic mm-hmm. for for such a, a shit summer that we've had mm-hmm. club football wise not in, in national but club yeah. football wise to go into tomorrow's game and thinking yeah we could probably do these against a team that's strong we finished really well last yeah, season yeah, is, really is well. crazy they haven't signed an outfield player West Ham yeah so and they've lost Jesse Lingard which I, I'm, I'm alone so huge loss it's a huge loss that uh, it is so you know I don't know but um, I that, agree that, that loss to Lingard is it would have been similar to, to us not bringing Willard back in yes. I agree with that totally, actually, yeah. Yeah. And and to touch on Willick, I mean, obviously thrilled, right, that he's that yeah. or signed him. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm shocked, to be honest, because the rumours were in, everyone was saying there's a £10 million budget and all the rest of it. Mm. And we're getting him for 25 or 22, whatever it is. And I, I'm surprised that he's willing to come to us, if I'm being honest, for six years. Like, I, I don't know, I mean, he might not stay for six years, but he's signed that deal. Um, well, look at last season's performance for Arsenal. There's probably a good reason why he's left. Well, he, he could, he, <laughs> he definitely could walk in that. Team. Easy, like easily walk into that. Team. I don't know what Arteta's not seeing or, or whatever, but their loss is our gain. Exactly. And it's a fabulous exactly. signing. And um, disappointing that he's not registered in time for tomorrow. Mm. But there's there's 37 games to go after that. Yeah, so there's a exactly. long way to go. Um, but for once, 
there's only a couple of times I think over the last few years where I've actually said, "Wow, that is amazing business," mm. and that's one of them. Yeah, that I'm really, really pleased with getting. Especially it brings such a player that had a huge impact on our season last year. Oh. Without his goals, we would have been right in yeah, the thick yeah. of it. 100%. I know, obviously, towards the end of the season, we did start like climbing out of that, that bottom three, bottom four, but that was down to Willick's goals. Mm -hmm. It really was. Mm -hmm. Um not not just Willick's goal, but what he done with the players around him as well. You saw Saint step up in his game, and, yeah. and obviously with the absence of Wilson, because I think he was injured at the time as well. Yeah, um, and I think Matty, who does the, the fantasy Premier League, said that there wasn't link up play between Wilson and Willick mm -hmm. last season. There wasn't their assist or a goal from either side linking right, each other okay. up, which is absolutely phenomenal when you think about it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. they didn't play many minutes together. No. Um, but yeah, Willick coming, and I, I don't care how much he cost. I don't care what his wages are. Because I know there was a lot of concern of fans, and I don't know why, because it's not our money that's being spent. Yeah. But a lot of fans are saying he doesn't deserve to have a 50, 60 grand contract. If I'm Joe Willick, and I mentioned this on Monday night's recording, I'm going in that boardroom with Lee Tony and saying, right, I was on here alone last season. What am I worth now after what I did for this club yeah. last year? He had the club by the balls, and rightly so. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's football in the modern day, isn't it? Where mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a player who's 21, English come in and score eight goals in a row mm -hmm. right, off the belt. It's it's kind of like all of a sudden you are the next big thing. Yeah. I'm su surprised there wasn't more competition. Maybe there was behind the scenes that we didn't know. Mm. But obviously he's had a taste of it, he hasn't. He knows what the fans are like. Yeah. He knows, like, for example, Saint was a huge fan of him because he yeah. kept mentioning we need to sign players like Willick. Yeah. You know, he kept saying that, you know. And and I, I think I put this, I put a tweet out last night saying, you know, if you can keep them fit, and that's very important. And I don't want to, because people will turn off, but... Bruce did say it towards the end was some certain period of last season saying when we'll get St. Wilson back, M Miggy back, we'll be all right. And in fairness, we actually turn out to be all, all right in the end. Mm. We have to keep that nucleus fit. I worry St. won't stay fit. Um, could get injured tomorrow. Uh, Wilson staying fit. You know what I mean? And can we keep Joe Willock fit? You know, it's well, those times last season where all three of them were injured at the same time. I, you've, we're fucked then. I'm not being yeah. funny, but we are. We, we've had if we lost all them. Um, as most teams would be, you take Son, Kane, and I don't know, the, the next top guy out, they're in trouble, right? Mm. And we would be in trouble because we can't score goals. But if we can keep them three fit, and I still have faith in Fernandez, Shea, Lascelles, I, I do. There's something there. I do believe there can be something there. Then you might come back to your manager. Of course, you might say, well, he's not good enough. Well, fair enough. Yeah. But Graham Jones is, so we'll see what exactly. happens to him. But, exactly. uh, but as I say, I, you know, even just talking now, I do feel a little bit more optimistic about the season ahead. I can't, I can't, I can't wait for the season now. <laughs> 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 right, so game-wise... Let's go score predictions. Mm -hmm. I normally hate doing score predictions because we're always wrong. Yeah, but we'll, we'll start. We'll we'll, we'll we'll get a taste of it because we'll be doing season predictions on Monday night. So score predictions. I'll let you start, mate. I'm going to go uh, two one Newcastle. That was mine as well. Okay, so we're in, we're in agreement. But, two no, one. No, no, two, two one. I don't think it's going to be a fantastic game. No. I think we're going to take a while to get into the floor of things, similar to what we did against Norwich um, in that in that preseason game, but. I think the players out there playing in black and white with a massive number four on the front of the shirt is that <laughs> they've got a point to prove in front of this whole crowd now. Yeah, The absence of, of fans that season, apart from the Sheffield game, um, yeah. that, that will allow it go to. It's it's going to make a difference. I, I, I honestly think it will. Well, we've got we've got a couple of players who I, I feel like... this is. Just, I, I don't know these people personally, but I'm just going to say what I think. Hayden, I don't think Hayden would give you any more, any less of those fans there or not. St. Maxim would. 100%. <laughs> like, you know, you 100%. said it in the Norwich game, right? Like, God, yeah. there was only, what, 20 or 1,000 there and how much he was so happy with it. And you, could see, you could just yeah. see in his game. Like, And I feel Wilson is another player who I feel, feeling, because he's never felt, mm. he's never felt it, right? Because he's never played in front yeah. of fans at our place, other than that friendly. So I feel that them types of players would really, really want to impress, want to score goals, want to do what they've got mm. to do. So, Fingers crossed that works in my advantage, you know? And I'm yeah. hoping that the atmosphere is really good tomorrow. I do appreciate there's a lot of hate towards Bruce and all the rest of it. I get it. But I would love to hear them just be there for the players and really, yeah. really sing and whatever. Chant just welcome it. them back. Yeah. Welcome yeah. them back. Yeah. And that's I would love it. that. Would yeah. Love that. Focus on the team. Absolutely. Itself. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, um, that's us just about done, mate. Um, cool. We've got more things coming. If you do want to listen, obviously you could tell that we haven't got a clue about West Ham all their players. But if you yeah. do want to listen, Matty did record. Oh, it was a good lad as well. That was. James, wasn't it? Good yeah, lad. so Matty record yeah. a Beyond the Lines with West Ham fans just a couple of days ago. So that's available both as a video on this channel and as audio download as well. You will notice this season, most of the videos that were put on the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel will be going out as audio podcasts as well because there was a lot of people last season saying, where is the audio? Yeah. So that's going to be starting back up. 
Um, we've had extra time. They speak about the West yes. Ham game a little bit. Uh, we had who do we have on there? So Matty from uh, our FPL show, he was on there as well, discussing why and why you shouldn't be putting Newcastle United players in your team this season. Um, Fair comment. Basically <laughs> saying, don't let your loyalty start putting Newcastle yeah. players in there because they're not very good picks. Um, and we had Shade uh, from San Diego. Yes. It was in there who came across very well, knew his stuff about Newcastle United. Cool as, as well. Wasn't he? Cool as yeah. that. Roger done a great job as hosting. He did. Alongside yeah. Laura yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, plenty more things to come this season. We're back, we're back on fire we're back. cylinders. We're getting back. Out, yeah. We've got a new little house, so we're going to be using this a lot more. Yeah, my bed's over there. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be using it, honestly. Um, hopefully, the audio is finally being sorted. It better be because we've spent a lot of money <laughs> on these microphones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks as always for sticking by. Thanks for watching the video and listening to the audio. And fingers crossed, it's off to an opener tomorrow. Let's hope so, mate. Let's hope so. Enjoy the game, everyone.